Income tax 2023-2024, special depreciation allowance. How can you elect not to claim an allowance? Get ready and some coffee because you're supporting an entire generation with income tax preparation 2023-2024. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us but but that's okay whatever because our merchandise is is better than their stupid stuff anyways like our trust me i'm an accountant product line yeah it's paramount that you let people know that you're an accountant because apparently we're among the only ones equipped with the number crunching skills to answer society's current deep complex and nuanced questions if you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Most of this information can be found in publication 946, How to Depreciate Property, Section 179, Deduction, Special Depreciation Allowance, Makers, Listed Property, and more tax year 2023, which you could find on the IRS website at irs.gov, irs.gov. Remember, in the first half of the income tax formula, basically a funny income statement. Most income statements having income minus expenses resulting in net income. Here, having income minus various deductions resulting in taxable income. The sole proprietorship schedule C ultimately rolling into line one income line of the formula. Noting the schedule C itself, basically an income statement. Having business income minus business expenses, which could also be called business deductions, resulting in, in essence, net business income rolling in from schedule C to line one income of the formula. The tax formula out outlining the calculation behind the form 1040, this being the first page of the 1040, this Schedule C ultimately rolling into line 8, additional income from Schedule 1. This is the Schedule 1, additional income and adjustments to income, part 1, additional income, Schedule C rolls into line 3, business income or loss. This is a Schedule C, profit or loss from business, having an income statement format, income minus expenses we're looking at the expenses usually the largest category with different items within it some expenses being more complex than others one of those complex expenses being the depreciation where as we saw in prior presentations even if we're on a cash based system we might have to do an accrual thing because we're forced to by the tax code such as with depreciation where we have to put it on the books as an asset and depreciate it over its useful life as opposed to just expensing it up front which is an accrual concept which the tax code borrowed from accepted accounting principles but then they tweaked it and messed with it for political purposes or whatever they're trying to do stimulate the economy and so on and so forth which means we have different components of depreciation the maker's depreciation is a kind of double declining balance makes sense from an accounting standpoint for the most part and then we have the 179 deduction and special depreciations the special depreciation is what we're looking at now allowing us an upfront depreciation in the year of purchase similar to if we just got to expense it on a cash based system when we bought it in the first place so that's the general idea here. So we're talking about the special depreciation at this point in time. So how can you elect not to claim an allowance? So note that the general idea would be with the special depreciation, how it's kind of working out is the section 179 deduction is an upfront depreciation, which typically you have to kind of make an election to take. And there's a dollar limitation for it which you would often want to do if you could, because then you can often get 100% of the deduction up front. But you could elect, you could not elect the 179 deduction. And then by default, as we can see kind of with software, when you do the data input into like software for depreciation, this special depreciation is often automatic. Basically the software will, will see if you qual if qualify for the software and apply the special depreciation. However, you can imagine a situation where maybe you don't want to take the special depreciation. 
Usually you would if you could, right? Because it would give you more depreciation upfront. The general idea being that if I have a $10,000 piece of equipment, that's the basis in the equipment. If I can get the full tax benefit of that basis today, expensing it, either if they would let me expense it on a cash-based method, calling it depreciation or just expense equipment, or if you call it 179 deduction or special depreciation, I would rather get it today than tomorrow. But you can imagine some situations where maybe it would be better to take it in the future rather than this year because of the progressive tax system. In other words, if I'm in a very low tax bracket this year and I expect my income to rise greatly next year and following years, then you can imagine a situation where I would rather take the deduction later because I'm going to be in higher tax brackets and therefore the deduction will have a bigger benefit later, even though the time value of money would normally say that we would want to take it earlier. All right. So you can elect for any class of property not to deduct any special depreciation allowance for all property in such classes placed in service uh, during the tax year. To make an election, attach a statement to your return indicating what election you are making and the class of property for which you are making the election. The election must be made separately by each person owning qualified property, for example, by the partnership, uh, by S corporation, or for each member of a consolidated group by the common parent of the group. So we're mainly looking at the sole proprietorship here. Obviously, it's a little bit uh, different if you're thinking about different types of entities. The partnership basically means that, of course, two or more people own the business and therefore you have separate partnership returns that you have to deal with partnerships being flow through entities as with the s corporation similar flow flow through type of entity so when to make election generally you must make the election on a timely uh, filed tax return including extensions so obviously if you're going to make the election not to take uh, the special depreciation you would like to do so when you actually do uh, the tax return typically, which would be due usually on like April 15th, plus, you know, extensions if you're going to be going on uh, extension. So for the year in which uh, you place the property in service. So however, if you timely filed your return for the year without making the election, you can still make the election by fil filing an amended return within six months of the due date of the original return, not including extensions. So you will recall with depreciation, it's one of those things that we would like to use the adage of measure twice, cut once, as opposed to tinkering with things. Both of those techniques, by the way, are fine, are good, depending on the circumstance. If you're trying to learn something like the guitar, you tinker with it until you figure it out. If you're trying to cut a door frame and place it into the door, you would rather measure it very well, measure it twice, cut once otherwise you're going to be gluing wood back together which doesn't do very well when you're trying to fit it and a door frame same thing here with the depreciation we're going to have an impact on multiple periods into the future with depreciation you don't want to have to go back and mess with the depreciation schedules and adjust them after you've already set them down you would like to set them down good the first time and let the tax software hopefully help you to calculate the depreciation going forward from uh, that point so attach the election statement to the amended return on the amended return right quote uh, filed pursuant to section 301.9100 slash two revoking an election once you elect not to deduct a special depreciation allowance for a class of property you cannot revoke the election without irs approval so this is you can think of this kind of as like an accounting method that you're taking here you're taking you're using an accounting method that you're applying to this type of depreciable property and therefore you you can't like change the election because you need an ex, a consistency principle unless possibly you ask for the IRS's approval which is not a situation you would typically want to get in so therefore again try to get it right the first time a request to revoke the election is a request for a letter ruling